One billion years ago, deep beneath the earth, by a miracle of nature, under enormous pressure and under scorching temperatures, diamonds were born. They are older than dinosaurs, and they are older even than some of the amazing stars you'll see in the Cape Town sky tonight. And that's why, for us, they represent the closest thing to forever that you can hold in your hand. Now, you know that diamonds are very, very difficult to find, but you probably don't know quite how difficult they are to find. In the history of diamond exploration and mining, 7,000 kimberlites have been discovered. Kimberlite is the host rock in which diamonds are found. But of those 7,000 kimberlites, only 1,000 contain any diamonds at all. And of those 1,000, only 60, that's less than 1% of these ever found, contain diamonds in enough volumes or quality to be economically extractable. And of those, only 7, which is 0.1% of the number of kimberlites ever found, have essentially yielded pretty much all of the diamonds in the world today. And four of those were brought to you by the De Beers Group. But to put this even more in perspective, if you took every single rough diamond ever mined and ever polished, and you put them in a double-decker red London bus, you would still have space for a driver. And finding the most exquisite, the most valuable, the most emotional diamonds is even more difficult. The De Beers Group recovers about 30 to 35 million carats a year on average. And of all of those, only 7,000 diamonds turn into the highest quality one carat polished diamonds. That's how hard it is to find a diamond, and that's how hard it is to find an absolutely exquisite diamond. But of course, these wonderful volcanic eruptions that caused the creation of the kimberlites and the explosions of the kimberlites to the surface of the earth are no longer happening. So nature is not making for us any new diamonds. And again, that is why this concept of forever is so incredibly important to us in the De Beers group. We like to think in the group, not just in terms of hours, days, weeks, months, but also in terms of years, lifetimes, Millennia, evil, millennia even, because these are the characteristics that attach themselves to life's most precious products. For us, the product is an eternal product, lasting forever. Diamonds are given and received at life's greatest moments. The birth of a child, an engagement, a wedding, the celebration of a partnership, the celebration of something particularly special, either individual or in a partnership. And that, for us, is the essence of a diamond and the, what, why a diamond is, for us, forever. And this was perhaps the most neatly summed up by this iconic phrase we've spoken about already. In 1947, on Madison Avenue, a young women copywriter, Frances Geraghty, working for an agency on behalf of the De Beers Group, coined this iconic line, a diamond is forever. Fantastic, too, that she was a woman working in Madison Avenue, and if you cast your mind back, can you imagine how misogynist Madison Avenue was in those days? So a great story for the De Beers Group. And this iconic line encapsulates for us absolutely perfectly the essence of a diamond, because it is forever. It is attached to these amazing moments in people's lives. Now, you heard yesterday from Lawrence some uh, glamorous and mystical stories about diamonds, so I don't propose to tell you any of those. What I'd like to do is tell you a little bit more of things that you may not know about the contribution diamonds makes and the contribution De Beers makes all over the world in which we operate and of which we are very proud. The first diamond found in Africa was found not too far away from here at a place called Kimberley by a 15-year-old boy, Erasmus Jacobs the son of a farmer. And he found this pebble in the ground, which became the Eureka diamond that you see in front of you. But of course, to him, it was just a pebble. So he played with it, 
and he gave it to his sister, who looked at it and thought the same thing, a pebble. So she played with it and gave it to her mother, who, believe it or not, gave it to a neighbor. And it turned into one of the iconic diamonds in the history of the diamond world. De Beers was formed not long after that, in 1888, in, in Kimberley. And you'll appreciate from what I've said that because diamonds are so difficult to find and because they represent for us so much forever, that we travel literally to the ends of the earth in order to discover them and to recover them. We mine in the arid Kalahari, where the temperatures in summer get as high as 50 degrees. We mine also and recover diamonds off the seabed in the, off the west coast of Namibia using technology that only the De Beers group has. That picture is of a 16,000 ton vessel recovering diamonds off the seabed outside the coast of Namibia. And we also go, as I said, to the ends of the earth. We mine inside the Arctic Circle in northern Canada, where it gets to minus 50 degrees centigrade in winter. And we can still mine and recover this precious treasure at those temperatures. And this is, of course, the stuff of legend. You may have seen some of these great documentaries on programs like Discovery Channel and National Geographic about the, the, the mythical ice road. Well, the ice road is what we build if the winter's cold enough so that we can truck up the supplies for our mine for a whole year. We have a six weeks window if the winter is cold enough to build a road and drive the product that we need to run the mine, supply the mine, up the road. So it's very important for us that the winters are spectacularly cold. But our task doesn't end there. Once we've found the diamonds and recovered them, we need to sort them. And diamonds are all different. So we sort them into well over 10,000 different categories. We sort them by size, by shape, by color, and by clarity. And this is another area where tremendous expertise is necessary. We need people with deep experience, great expertise, and of course, great technology. And of course, the beauty of diamonds is every single one is different and unique. Some of them are of exceptional value. Now, one of the privileges of my job is that I get to see, and sometimes even hold, Susie, some of the greatest diamonds in the world. And there was so much talk yesterday about diamonds and pockets that I brought something. <laughs> so I have here a 616 carat rough diamond. This diamond was recovered by De Beers in 1974. It is the largest octahedron diamond ever recovered and it is forever. Now, I was hoping that I was going to be able to pass it around, the audience, for everyone to play with, and really hope I could collect it at the back at the end. But sadly, security said I'd have to hold on to it. So you'll have to believe me that this is 616 carats of rough diamond. And by another absolutely miracle quirk, De Beers' post box address in Kimberley genuinely is P.O. Box 616. That shows you what De Beers can do. <laughs> now from there, because each diamond is so different and is so individual, it, it requires tremendous skill to cut and polish the diamond because each one is different. Each one is unique, like a snowflake or a fingerprint. And the most exquisite diamonds require master cutters to cut them, who spend years and years and years in training. So you'll see that this exercise of mining, sorting, and cutting diamonds, these exquisite treasures, is particularly complex and requires enormous skill. Timelessness, rarity, uniqueness, and craftsmanship, these are the characteristics that attach to diamonds. But for us, there's much, much more. It's how we bring the diamonds to market, and the impact that we make on the communities in which we operate. Now, you all know, as well as anyone from an, from an audience like this, of course, knows how important ethical and social issues are to consumers. And you'll know that 75% of millennials shape their purchases of luxury goods based on their view of the product's ethical and sustainable characteristics. And you'll know that more than 50% of all purchases by everybody are made of brands 
the values of which reflect the values of the people who purchase them. And that, I think, for all of us, we would agree, is a wonderful thing as society progresses. But for us, and for me at De Beers, it goes further than that. The core of De Beers and the core of our sustainability strategy, which we like to call building forever, is the contribution that De Beers has made to the societies in which it operates. That's a picture of a primary school at our Venetia mine in Limpopo province in South Africa, built entirely out of our revenues from the De Beers mine up there. And it goes much further than that. We mine, as I've said, in Botswana, Namibia, South Africa, uh, and Canada. And we like to think of ourselves as we mine in partnership with the people of those countries. The story of Botswana is perhaps the most powerful of all. In 1966, Botswana gained independence. It was, by some measures at the time, the poorest country on earth. De Beers geologists first discovered diamonds in Botswana in 1967 at a place which became Orapa Mine. At the time, Botswana, a country about the size of Spain, had three miles of tarred roads. Today, because of the wise investment by government of diamond revenues, the country has 4,000 miles of tarred roads. Botswana today is an upper middle income country and has been one of the fastest growing countries over the last 20 years. When we found the diamonds that turned into a Rapa mine, there were three secondary schools in Botswana. Today there are just under 300 and schooling for all children up to the age of 13 is free. Our joint venture in Botswana, called Debswana, which is our mining joint venture, is owned 50% by De Beers and 50% by the government of Botswana. And that's why we say we're in partnership with the people of Botswana. Our, our contribution in Botswana goes far further. You will all remember the, the scourge of HIV and AIDS and how awful that was in the years when there was no treatment. Our mining venture in Botswana was the first mining company on earth to provide free antiretrovirals for all our workers and all their partners. And I'm really proud to tell you that in the last 10 years, there has not been one HIV positive baby born to anyone in the De Beers group or their partner. An amazing achievement. And that's something that we are rightly particularly proud of. If you look at this picture, it symbolizes Botswana's progress. On the left-hand side, an acacia tree. You can imagine children hungry to learn sitting in the blazing sun in Botswana in 1966. So on the right, and on the left-hand side, I beg your pardon, a school we built at Zhuaneng, the site of the greatest diamond mine of them all, state-of-the-art school, and symbolically called the Acacia School. And it goes further, though, because in 2013, as a sign of our commitment to Botswana, we relocated the entire De Beers global sales operation from London to Botswana. Um, those legendary sites that you know about now take place in Botswana, and the ancillary benefits for all of those involved in Botswana are enormous, as our clients, site holders, travel to Botswana 10 times a year to make their purchases and spend in the local economy. In Namibia, the story is not different. We're also in a 50-50 joint venture with the government of Namibia, and our revenues, which constitute 10% of GDP and about 30% of the forex in Namibia, are used to create opportunities, education, healthcare, etc. In South Africa, my home country, not far from here, we are investing $2 billion extending the life of our flagship mine here, Venetia, by 25 years, thus sustaining jobs, 1,500 to 2,000 jobs for another 25 years. So you'll appreciate for us why forever is so at the core of our sustainability strategy. But there are two areas that I'm particularly proud of in what we do in our sustainability work that I'd like to share with you. The first one is standing with women and girls. 90% of the consumers of our product ultimately are women, so it makes so much sense that we associate much more closely with women. In 2017, we partnered with UN Women um, to build our Empowering Women and Girls strategy, standing with women and girls. I became a UN Women He for She thematic champion, and we made some ambitious commitments in the De Beers group largely around building sustainable communities around our mines in Southern Africa and in Canada. We're investing an additional $3 million um, in educating people in the Southern African communities, in 
training female micro-entrepreneurs, because all the data tells us that female micro-entrepreneurs reinvest 90% of the proceeds of their businesses back in the communities. And I'm sorry to say for all the men in the room, it's not nearly as good as that if you're a man. So we've already trained under, just under 1,500 women uh, in Botswana, South Africa, and Namibia, and we're evolving the program in order now to train trainers so that the program never stops and that we continue to contribute to the society in that way. In Canada, the focus is more on education of women from indigenous communities and science education. So we spend a lot of time trying to make science a fun subject for women from the indigenous communities at school, and we have up to 40 scholarships for women from indigenous communities to study STEM subjects at Canadian universities. And we also took a long, hard look inside at the beers. We made some very public commitments about we're gonna, what we're going to do. We are going to double the rate of senior hires of women in the De Beers group by 2020, and I'm pleased to tell you we're well on target to deliver that. We also took a look at advertising, these wonderful brands that we advertise, De Beers and Forevermark, and we revised our advertising guidelines to have much more inclusive guidelines so that we can portray men and women as they should be without gender stereotypes. So we're very, very committed in the group to standing with women and girls. And the other area that we are so proud of in our Building Forever strategy is protecting the natural world. We mine, and of course we disturb the earth. We do it as gently as possible. But what we do too is for every hectare we disturb, we have at least six hectares of pristine land, um, usually around the mines. And in the group we have over 200,000 hectares of pristine land across the, the places in which we mine. Now, you'll also all know of the awful, awful poaching that goes on in Africa. Now, you would expect, of course, that a diamond mine is a very safe place to, to be, and it is. And it turns out that our reserves, nature reserves that we create around our mines, are very safe places for our animals. So we, we came across a sort of a unique problem at our Venetia game reserve, which is that it's so safe and the conditions are so good that the elephant in the reserve have been able to flourish and flourish to the point where the elephant population in the reserve is too big for the reserve. We have 270 of these magnificent giants in the reserve, and the reserve can only cope with 70. And there is an impact on other species if you don't do something about it. So we thought long and hard about what to do about it, and we came up with a great idea which we like to call moving giants. We are undertaking the largest and longest translocation of elephant ever done. We are moving 200 of these magnificent giants 1,700 kilometers across Africa from our reserve at Venetia to reserves in Mozambique that do not have elephant populations and are anxious to restock. We've already moved the first 50. We did it in the South African winter. And in addition to doing that, we've invested another half a million dollars in training rangers, training them in anti-poaching techniques, buying equipment, and helping women and girls. So it's a wonderful program for us to be involved in. The remaining 150 we'll move over the next two winters. So we don't stop there. You remember that host rock kimberlite that I mentioned earlier in which diamonds are found? Well, it turns out kimberlite has natural carbon capture qualities. So our scientists, together with a group of international scientists, are working really hard on figuring out how we can accelerate the carbon capture qualities of kimberlite. And close your eyes and think of a world in 10 or 15 years' time when diamond mines are carbon neutral. Won't that be a great place to be? And as I sum up, ladies and gentlemen, may I ask you to take a minute and look to your left, look to your right, look behind you, look in front of you. You will see a diamond. This is a luxury conference, after all. <laughs> now, that diamond has been meaningful in the person's life who's wearing it or who bought it, and it will be passed on because that is the essence of a diamond. But if you bought that diamond from the De Beers group, and there's a pretty good chance you did, you can rest comfortably in that that diamond has built communities, has stood with women and girls, and has protected the natural world. And that's because for us, ladies and gentlemen, a diamond is forever. Thank you so much.